All right, here we go. Uh, let's see, chat's working. All right. Go Component Lab. Today I'm actually um, pretty excited about this uh, project. Um, some of the recent projects we were doing stuff with a project called Duplex, um, which is you know, basically an RPC-ish system that I've been working on in some form, probably since 2012. Um, so over five years, it's gone through a lot of forms, and I've and I've worked on it in a lot of other projects, but. Um, kind of started before gRPC came out um, and gRPC I was very excited because when I saw it it basically hit on almost every feature um, that uh, I wanted uh, the problem though it was kind of still getting adopted and it was focusing on protocol buffers even though you could do different codecs um, and uh, so I let some time pass and now it's getting pretty popular people are starting to see the the benefits of doing systems with RPC as opposed to doing HTTP services for everything so um, that's taken off um, especially the scale of some API's uh, a lot of Google Cloud API's are gRPC just because they're it's very complicated um, and it, doing protocol buffers and stuff gives you all this kind of like type safety and, and formalization of uh, API uh, schemas and, and versions and stuff like that. So that's all great. I don't necessarily like protocol buffers, though. I prefer something like Message Pack, um, and uh, the code that it generates is protocol buffers generates is usually kind of big and complicated um, and a little bit hard to integrate with your systems. I actually did an experiment. Um, uh, as a stream a little while ago, which was running, kind of revisiting gRPC, I decided to do a gRPC server um, uh, because there's actually a great, the, the Go library for gRPC, um, which is just the RPC client and server, uh, is actually pretty great. Um, so I decided to use that and do a gRPC client and server um, just to see you know what it was like um, and to revisit gRPC and see if it's something that I could use instead of doing my own RPC system uh, is pretty good I came to the conclusion though it's not ready uh, or not not ready it just doesn't satisfy my core requirement which is um, being able to do callbacks um, one of the features of gRPC is streaming so you can stream data uh, to it and stream data back which was actually one of the uh, great, uh, you know, features or innovations in RPC systems that I had been working on since, um, I'm trying to remember, Zero RPC uh, was kind of a nice sort of approach, and then the RPC system we did for Flynn had this, which we basically copied or used from Vitas, the Vitas project, um, but uh, it turns out once you have callbacks, which means bi-directional um, uh, invocations, uh, which is probably one of the rarest features in an RPC system. Um, when you do that, you don't really need streams because you can model a stream through callbacks, right? Um, and even though you might get a little bit better overhead doing a stream, and there are some cases where it might be better, um, the RPC systems that I started working on, uh, or a recent version of Duplex, um, was just focusing on uh, doing normal invocations um, without streams, but allowing callbacks. Now the direction that I've been kind of being taken and what's providing a great reference is Dbus because Dbus provides uh, a better model for what I'm looking for anyway, um, which is more than just RPC. Uh, it's RPC um, with a uh, with object paths and so object paths let you think of you know a kind of hierarchy of uh, objects that you can call methods on 
and this can be used for static, you know, calling kind of, um, you know, what you think of as like static methods, um, stateless services. Um, but you could also reference individual objects. And this is important just because some APIs will return objects and to convert that into a stateless service means you have to recreate a whole different API. And so, um, you know, even though there are definitely downsides to these kind of like stateful, you know, object things, you know, C, you know, Corba and uh, COM and stuff like that, DCOM, uh, this, uh, you know, if, if used appropriately, it's still a very useful tool. Um, so instead of just calling met, uh, messages, you can also get proxy objects. It really depends on the kind of layers you have around it. But um, the main thing is, is this idea of um, being able to address objects uh, at a path, as well as it has a bunch of kind of built-in APIs uh, or interfaces um, that more or less provides the rest of the RPC protocol, um, being able to introspect and stuff like this. So th these are all things that I need for what I'm building. And um, uh, I can't really use Dbus, but I can use it as a reference. Um, Duplex, I've been using as my prototyping thing, but we're starting to run into some limitations and you probably saw in some previous videos, I was really itching to rewrite it. And the main conclusion was Duplex, um, Duplex is written uh, serialization agnostic, which gRPC as well. You just create a new codec and you can use protocol buffers or message pack or JSON. So um, that's not a big deal. Transport agnostic is a little bit more of a big deal. Um, gRPC is pretty tied to HTTP2. Um, and uh, not just in sort of like its design, but just all its implementations. And so you could tunnel HTTP2 over another connection. Um, but uh, the idea here was that all we needed was a transport that had a framing protocol. So you might not be able to use straight TCP, but you could use WebSockets or any kind of messaging thing or UDP, anything that has like a well-defined frame because it just expects messages to come in frames, so it doesn't have to do any of the, the frame parsing stuff. Um, and you could write a thin frame parsing layer on top of TCP. Um, and that was because, and the other thing is that, uh, and this is what gRPC uh, also kind of figured out in parallel, which is um, a great way to model RPC is as multiplex streams, especially when you are dealing with streaming data either way. Basically, um, a single call is a, like a single connection and it has standard in and standard out. And so you can just serialize objects, send them off and you know get objects back. Um, and you don't have to worry about any of the other uh, messages that might be you might be sending to that to that server. Um, but you don't want to open up a connection for every call. Um, and that's kind of the same way that Google got to HTTP2, which was let's have it open a single connection and then multiplex your streams. Um, I had been doing this because of my work in SSH, which is the only other protocol that has multiplexing uh, sort of as a g generic stream multiplexing thing. Um, and so, uh, but eventually I just kind of did a uh, my own kind of channel based thing in in the RPC protocol um, because we, I just take a framed thing a framed transport and then we sort of model streams on top of it but now I'm thinking well why don't we just instead of saying give us a, a frame transport why not say give us a multiplex transport um, and that takes care of, that actually simplifies this protocol a lot more um, and using multiplex protocols like SSH HTTP2 or Quick, which I'll get to, um, you can basically have a single connection or a single session and then have these, per, you know, a channel basically per uh, RPC call. So ultimately where I'm trying to go here, and I don't know if it's going to be called duplex, but an RPC system that I'm using for building something else. Um, and uh, Today, uh, we're going to be 
kind of doing a prototype of a, the next version of that, um, which I'm going to be doing on top of Quick. And um, I'm going to be doing it in a way where the transport is actually abstracted to where it just assumes a multiplex transport, so as the semantics of a multiplex transport. In that way, we could actually swap Quick out for HTTP2, um, for SSH, for um, uh, Muxadu, which is, or, or any other, like Muxadu is a subset of HTTP2 in a Go library um, for doing, specifically doing um, multiplexing. And then HashiCorp has their multiplexing uh, library as well. But let's talk about Quick. Um, Quick is, I've been excited about Quick for a long time, ever since I heard about it, um, since it was announced. Um, basically is an alternative to TCP built on top of UDP. Because what TCP gives you is basically um, uh, a, a stream session, right? It's like, you know, even though you have to send these individual packets across, um, uh, this is a TCP is a protocol that basically um, accumulates those packets into a stream that you can kind of just read off of like IO um, and then uh, it'll handle you know d delivering uh, packets that fail and stuff like that and it was well this initial handshake and of course finally uh, eventually we had to secure that some way so we came up with I mean HTTPS which evolved to TLS um, and then uh, and so now we have a secure streaming abstraction, um, but it's not multiplex. And HTTP2 is really weird because at its core, it's actually a multiplexing protocol. Like it gives you ways to open channels or streams within your connection um, and just, you know, some metadata and stuff like that. So you can actually use HTTP2 like Muxadu and others have um, as a multiplexing protocol. Quick, on the other hand, is saying, because a lot of people, you can use UDP, which is, even though it's an alternative to TCP, it's almost like, it, it almost feels like a, a lighter weight version that you could, in theory, re, re, write your own TCP in. In fact, maybe, maybe, many people have, and there's other protocols that are sort of semi-standard that people have written to um, do streams or reliable UDP. Um, and Quick is another take at that by Go, except it incorporates uh, some security uh, built in, so you get TLS-like security, and it's also multiplexed by default. So you get the multiplexing at this transport level, and to me, that's really cool. Um, uh, the security is, is nice to have as well. In fact, that's one of the kind of nice features of Quick is that the um, connectivity overhead of a normal TCP connection is, you know, maybe 100 milliseconds. And then if you do TLS, then it, the, hand, the initial setup is something like two or three hundred milliseconds, whereas Quick is actually zero millisecond overhead. Um, and so they figured out how to do that, secure and all that stuff, and have multiplex streams. So that's amazing. Um, there's some other benefits to it being UDP, like the fact that it's a little bit easier to do peer-to-peer -peer hole punching things and do interesting things like that, which we might explore at some point. But um, uh, and what's interesting is, as you'd expect, you can actually open. Um, it's a symmetrical protocol. You can open uh, sessions, or you can open streams or channels uh, on a quick session in either direction. And that's what we need for our RPC. So there's finally a pretty good uh, native Go implementation of Quick um, that's being used for Caddy. And um, it's a pretty full featured implementation. It has a client and a server. Um, and uh, even though it's Quick is often used as an alternative to the HTTP2 stack, um, I think People should really think about it and use it for as a generic um, networking uh, protocol because with multiplex streams, you can really model a lot of stuff. Um, it's just a very powerful primitive to have multiplex um, streams. So very efficient, very powerful and expressive. Let's build RPC on top of it.
Um, so besides my gRPC message pack experiment, I did do a, a quick demo um, using this library. It basically um, starts a, a client, a server in the traditional sense of like, I'm going to listen and I'm going to connect. Both of those endpoints though, um, run uh, an echo client and an echo server. And so they basically, once you connect, they will both call each other and then they both provide an echo service. And so I know that's kind of ridiculous and it is, right? Client sending foobar, server sending foobar, server echoing foobar, both received. The point of this was that it was symmetrical. We we're able to open up streams in both the connect both directions, either direction, once we establish that, mm, what do you want to call it, actual connection. Um, uh, so this is uh, working. So that, that told me that we probably can use this now. Um, so we'll call this QRPC. I don't really know what to call it yet. And I was thinking of doing a transport sub package first. Um, and I wanted to do this because I wanted to find interfaces that we consume, which is actually the best way to, to work with interfaces in Go instead of defining you know, common interfaces to have every package on the consuming side of an interface to find that interface. Um, and so this lets us uh, provide this interface that in theory other people or the user of this could actually use to wrap up anything other than quick and eventually we might be able to do that. And so this is sort of a generic um, multiplexed session API where you have a session, once your connection is established, you have a session. Um, it looks like a normal connection, like a local and remote adder, um, and you can close the connection. We also have a context, might as well throw context in there. And then you can open and accept. And so as you can imagine, open is saying, I want to open up a channel or a sub stream or sub connection to the other side and accept is going to wait for somebody to connect to you. And then either way you get a channel. And a channel for the most part is very similar to a net con, um, which is why we have this, but we'll leave that out for now, which is more or less a read write closer. Um, but we also have some way to identify the channel within this session. And then we have a context as well. Um, so we've defined our kind of interface for the transport. Um, I guess the easiest thing to do next would be to do a uh, implementation that wraps the quick libraries, which should be pretty straightforward. Um, so. Uh, the quick API is actually pretty simple. Um, once you make a connection, it gives you a session. So, I can't type quick without the K. It's very difficult for me. Um, so, We'll just kind of embed uh, the quick session in here. And then, um, oh, that's, that's obvious. We should return errors here. So one question is, what does ID return? Uh, in quick, it looks like it's uh, unsigned. I don't know what this spec is. I'm assuming this is close to spec, an unsigned integer, 64 bit. Um, 
other other protocols that do this are similar. Um, but in all those cases, we also tend to wrap around. Um, so it almost doesn't matter too much because um, it's not going to limit us. It's really how many you can have at the same time because otherwise it's going to start wrapping around and you run into weird stuff. Um, We could, of course, abstract this, um, but I don't really know what that would be, so I'm just going to do uh, a uint 64 for now. So um, we need to implement these. Um, actually, maybe we don't if we uh, just let them pass through. Oh, we're not in the protocol package. Uh, looks like we can do local adder and remote adder. Those are, we don't have to do those. Probably close, although close takes an error. Uh, apparently, we get a way to close, um, so we will have to implement this. It's probably just going to look like this. Uh, it looks like we can also let them use context. So really it's just these, which they have a couple of different versions. Um, so you can extrap uh, accept a stream, and a stream is their channel, which is, you know, a sub connection. Um, but they do have uni streams, which is unidirectional, um, which I really don't feel like we have any need to model here. Um, then on their open, um, they have two forms for each of those, which is a synchronous and, and non-synchronous way. The synchronous one is... Um, and blocks until the peer's concurrent stream limit allows a new stream to be opened. I kind of just want to assume that. So I think we would just wrap um, this. So um, this interface is a little bit simpler. Uh, we're going to get a stream and an error. And then uh, we want to return quick. I guess we should call it a stream. Quick calls it a stream. We're calling it a channel. Uh, in theory, this is a implementation detail. So I'll just do that. You know what? Similar. 
Hopefully we will do mostly the same thing here. So, um, streams, for the most part, we only need to implement stream ID because we just say ID. I suppose type equals is a like a type alias. So in theory I should be able to just return this. I think. Nope. interface so far all right so this feels like boilerplate um, so far but it is an investment um, let's look at our demo TLS config. gives us our thing. Listen, adder. Why are they doing it? Adder. Uh, so for now, we'll do uh, listen quick and dial quick. That'll set these up and wrap that. So. We should see what they're Ooh, packet connection. That's interesting. It's our config. Oh yes. So um I imagine we will expose all of that. Um, TLS, and this is quick config. This is gonna give us a session. There, so this is basically just wrapping dial adder. Hmm. Okay. 
Do we want to take a context? We'll come back to that. Listen, listen quick. Looks like it's pretty much the same thing. That gives us a listener. Not Oh, interesting. I want to learn more. Oh, just because of uh, accept, because of this type. Not a bad way to go about it. I imagine their listener is But where is it implemented? Wait. Listen, listen for a quick connection on a given packet connection. Listen, UDP. Oh, because it's UDP. UDP is weird like this. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, wait. Listen. Turns a server. The server is a listener. That's interesting. Uh, okay. Because otherwise we would have to accept and then somehow wrap this into a. Uh, Thing. So I guess we would want to create a listener here. It's basically the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's our session. This is, these are all specific to, eh, not necessarily specific to quick, but um, close enough. Okay, so I'm thinking we create a listener that wraps the net listener. And um, and our implementation implementation of uh, accept calls accept on the listener, and then when we get a uh, c 
connection. Let's see, would that be a quick listener then? It's basically a quick server. This is, this is all incorrect for the moment. Um, we can actually we, we do have to wrap it though because we need to return our session so We want a channel. No, we want a session. Sorry. That's one of the downsides of working with um, multiplex protocols is you have two layers of accept to think about. Um, also, same similar thing when you are doing client server and it's actually peer and they're both as you're like naming wise you're confused because they're both the same. They don't have the context of client or server by nature of doing a client and server structure. We'll get to that. Um, in this case, we are literally just wrapping it. Um, we get a session and an error. We again wrap. Okay, so that is the difference. What I was thinking would be. Yeah, I'm just. Oh, I, I need to specifically. Uh, when you when you're embedding stuff, uh, if you don't specify the, uh, especially if you're not naming it, if you don't specify the type, it's just gonna call yourself again. Um, okay, I think we've wrapped everything that we need to wrap, so we could. Um, uh, let's see, why don't we start writing a demo? So, um, actually, I'm going to think about this. I'm going to start doing some of the types for the RPC because it's going to help frame me think about what to do next. Um,
So the RPC protocol is pretty simple. We're going to assume message pack and it's going to basically be every connection is going to have in both directions two objects. The first one is um, a header object that represents uh, that operation. In this case, it's always only a request um, or a response. And then there's the payload. I put the payload inside the object uh, in my last implementation, which is really annoying because um, you want to expose the deserialization to the user. But if you've already deserialized it, you have to then do some trickery to assign it to the right type that they want. So if you do it this way, um, it's actually much cleaner. Uh, and you can, um, uh, it's easy to write and solves that, solves that problem. So um, the only thing we really need is this idea of a destination. I'm calling it destination as opposed to method or path or anything like that. Um, uh, just because it can kind of be used a little bit more, I don't want to say generically, but uh, if you have a path system, you can say the destination is path or the destination is this method. So semantically, it's just a little bit more uh, general. I might change my mind though and make that path. Um, path though, all calling it request and then you say path, you start thinking HCP. So uh, calling it something else actually makes it a little bit clearer what's going on. So um, the only thing here is um, an error. I forget how message pack deserializes. It should be if it's a string. We'll, we'll try this. So the response is going to give you, besides the payload, potentially an error. Oh, and this can be nil, I guess, is the idea. Um, okay. Now, we could do a separate client and server interfaces, but we're just going to combine them into a peer. But they're also not that complicated. So, um, I will do again. I don't think you'd ever just have a client, but. All right, let's simplify this. We'll call it a connection. And so this is like a high level RPC connection in which we can um, do something like get our session, serve, register, and invoke, basically. So that's going to give us a transport session. Um, Serve is just is going to start routing uh, messages uh, to whatever you register. So And this is, we're doing just normal kind of stateless RPC. Uh, eventually we'll push this into a direction where it's more of like a D-Bus type of thing. Um, but, you know, this is the same either way, like the path to the method, right? Um, this is gonna be pretty simple, I might,
borrow code from gRPC. I call this an invoke in, uh, in gRPC, they call it invoke, and every other RPC system I've done, it's you know based on other things, particularly in Go, they call it call. Um, I think I'm gonna call it call. Um, let's see what their call looks like. It's in here somewhere. I'll invoke. Remember, every time I implemented this before, I had to do something more complicated because of streams. Um, this is their shortcut to normal uh, unary. Uh, calls, which is, here's the arguments, giving back the reply. Um, for everything else, you have to do, set up a stream, and it's all this complicated thing. So I'm actually pretty happy that we can kind of avoid that by saying we're not going to do streams. I'm not saying we won't ever do streams, but um, we can get pretty far just doing callbacks, which is part of the point of all this. So. Um, I need to take a context, but let's do instead. Let's see, args and reply. Uh, you know what? We won't even do this. We'll just do this. So this is, again, bare bones. When we start dealing with callbacks and all this stuff, we're going to want all kinds of helpers, and there'll be a, a, something to design. But um, So here. I just want to call this a peer. So let's make a peer. And a peer is going to have a session. Maybe some other stuff, but we'll come back to that. Uh, let's implement these. And session. I was thinking about I was thinking about C sharp, and then I went into C sharp mode, and hit a semicolon. All right, what are your problems here? Undefined path. Uh, I, this is also C sharp ism. Okay, so the interesting stuff, and we'll do the simplest thing. Um, we'll call them objects.
Oops. I was thinking we were looking it up. Um, and... I'm just about call. Um, this is... Actually pretty... Um, a bulk of work is gonna happen here. And then our here we also need to implement the serve. Which is the bulk of the... you know, the uh, routing of, of messages. Um, why don't we look at, no, how do we want to do this? session here and we can accept new channels so for now we will print that error Uh, unless it's uh, end of connection or yeah if it's this is done it would be done um, so this is pretty similar to what we were writing before um, we've written this a few times but the main thing we want to do is use message pack message message pack do we want to use there's a couple hmm. we have marshall and unmarshall but i would like a decoder encoder thing nonsense okay we can do that what is the this handle nonsense I'm already kind of just wanted to use this. <sighs> oh, this is nice of them. I'm happy just doing it this way, though. Uh, this introduces its own buffering. Okay, so that makes this easy. So we're doing a decoder, yep.
think it's the one that I have in it. Installed decoder. Yep. Um. So here we are getting uh, a request object. So. You just say decoder decode decoder decode into request you know what I'm just gonna panic on all these for now Okay, so in in a future version of this, you would register an object, and then it would um, reflect and get all the methods. And actually, Go's built-in standard RPC does that already. It's what we're using in our implementation of Duplex. I think we cleaned it up, but um, in this case, we're actually going to assume that this is a callable. Um, yeah. And uh, so calling it, I need to look up to see what, how we were doing that. Uh, functions would take a channel. Abstraction. That's interesting, this approach where you would pass a channel in. I think we iterated to that point because then a channel object is something that you would just receive to get the thing and send to send it on. And that's actually why we didn't have to do any fancy stream interfaces. Because we actually have the streaming kind of built in. Anyway, so we're going to avoid streaming and just um, write something we can call that we're going to pass these args into. And the easiest thing just for now to get working would be something like pass in um, an interface and return an interface our handler things, but oh man. Streaming it introduces a lot of complexity. Here we go. Uh, well, I'm going to look at, um, there is a lot to that. I'm going to look at how um, gRPC ends up doing it. They do something weird. No, 
it's the server side. What is um This whole like interceptor thing, it's like middle wary. Let's see, what did my server here look like? Handler. Right, it didn't do anything fancy. It was just like, here's a request, return a response, you deal with this. Um, which Google has all kinds of crazy abstractions. <sighs> when they write code, like they pass in the decoder. It's all these weird things I just don't see very often. Um, I'm sure it's helpful for testability. That's actually maybe the reason why they do it because they're so big on testability. Um, mm. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do interfaces for now because we can do the reflection stuff later. Um, just to get this working. So um, this would actually be a function. We'll call it handler, which is a function that takes a request interface, returns an interface, and So this makes it very easy. Um, uh, we'd have a request, so we'd look up the destination. Um, so we'd want to lock. Uh, 
It's a string called error. You know what? I'll just return that. Um, I'm only assuming we're going to do this very much, so could be wrong. then uh, so assuming we have the handler then we can just call a handler 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 uh, we need to decode the payload I'm supposed to send a channel to you. Okay. Um. And maybe we do this in a go routine or something, but for now we'll just do them sequentially. Could be no. It's kind of maybe why I want it to be an error itself. Who knows how that will encode? All right. After we encode that, 
Because it, it actually, you can call with an encoder, you can call encoder decode multiple times. It just is assuming that you're, they're separated by new lines. So that's what makes this really nice. And then we'll just close. Just now we have to do this. It's not a encoder can't close, but uh. This one is continue. Panic, sure. This one is continue. Uh, what's this problem? Oh no. Oh, because I was thinking of it being a string. Um, I guess it can be. An error is no, also. What now? Okay, so this is our server, um, and it doesn't have anything to do with Quick. This is the RPC side of things. Um, in theory, all the Quick stuff is taken care of. We're just messing with these channels. Um, let me just implement call. Which is pretty simple. So that's sent off, 
and then uh, we just have to wait for the response. Which is basically um if there's an error in this response, then we'll return that. I Again, we'll see how message pack deals with encoding errors. I imagine they're basically nullable strings, but maybe it can't, we'll see. we couldn't do that here. We had to close like that. I can just do decoder, decode, reply. How's this look? It's a pretty simple RPC system. Um, let's see, quick gives us listeners and session. Here from a session. I don't think that there is any error. I have to do all that. So, if we were to adapt our, or is it not that, our quick demo. And we do something kind of like this. Um, let's clear all of this out. Um, but we will do, we'll need that. All right. So 
So first we'll do a really simple, we dial something, we call something, server has a thing, and then we'll do bidirectional like this, and um, kind of talk about what next. the QRPC I know I know let's just look it up Dial quick. It was pretty much the same thing, so we're using that. TLS. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Uh, this gives us a. Session, right? A. Transport session. Figure that out. Okay, we can get rid of these actually. Session. All right, so both of these now have uh, session. Let me think about this. Though. So this is a one-time accept. So it's not we're not creating a loop that it that accepts. Um, uh, one of the things that we would need to do here. giving us transport session. All right, so now we need to make the RPC peer. takes So just listening on our uh, session for, for new channels. And then, no, I guess we could just sit there and, and serve. So here we can just say, go listen. Um, so then here, we can just do a call. Um, and it should be able to be anything, so and our response we don't care about. Now we do. We 
we do, we do. truth okay there we go so we made a little RPC thing and it's actually over quick and you wouldn't really know because we're not really doing anything quick specific which is kind of a great thing um, we could do a more complex object here maybe uh, I guess not if it knows. So it might be a little hard to change it on the server side. Set request to false and response to true. Um, It's interesting, I actually have no idea what it would give us. It'd be a map. Let me try doing that. I don't want to try and assign it into a type yet, because we this is a short term thing. This is input and output, but it's 
the, the semantics start getting. we can say oops hmm I see Request was set to false. All right, so now maybe what are some of the next steps? Um, we'd have uh, so this 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 is an RPC system over uh, quick. Um, we can make servers here. Oh, I guess we try and. Um, Do a, a wrapper in here that would give us kind of take care of some of this for us. Um, so basically, like a high level, uh, high level dial. Server's different. I imagine we'd want something that you could call serve on. So for now, we'll just kind of do some defaults with um, the quick stuff. Um, basically saying no, quick config, and insecure skip verify true. This now becomes dial P. 
here. Seen as pure close, pure closes. a little bit. Um, basically a listen and serve is what we're looking at making here. Uh, but we would need register stuff. I mean, it could return something and then you register. Um, as opposed to like setting up a server and then oh, we can we can do that version later. This one can just Gonna block, right? Thoughts. I need a way to pass in handlers, but we don't have a way to set handlers until we have a peer. could kind of do it the HTTP way. The HTTP way being I mean they have this whole kind of recursive thing. Um, doesn't really work here because of the way that we Here's what we'll do for now. We'll do a type um, destinations, which is a list of destination 
destination being um, a path and a handler. So listen and serve can take um, destinations. And so we can load those in with register. Yeah. If we get an error here, I can return it. And then here we can range over um, destinations, call register. We've got a path and Handler. And then we would serve, which uh, I guess we would do in a go routine. And let me think about this. Something doesn't look right. Okay, yeah, no, this is fine. Uh, so we can update this. Basically, Oh, we don't have that. I'm surprised it is not complaining about it. What? Who's trying to import? From there, me, okay. Still?
Uh, that's weird. Did it auto complete that for me? I, it's, it seems like code has done that a couple times. Okay, so now it's complaining about that. So it had other errors. Um, eh, for now, I'm gonna throw. I think I'm gonna throw that into the. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll put it here in uh, QRPC for now. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So really, all we're doing is in theory, we can do this. Destinations, right? Um, so we do a listen and serve. We say, "Here's our handlers," and then we do a dial, which is uh, pretty simple. So simple, in fact, we could throw that in our main now. So we're getting there, we're kind of building up the, these abstractions, um, but the underlying stuff works. I, I can't stress how like simple it is conceptually because you're building off these stream primitives, these streams as a primitive, and then just doing some basic um, encoding and decoding uh, on those streams, and then um, Know, structuring it so that the first object is basically the header for whatever it is and then the next is the payload um, and then just doing every connection uh, every channel sub connection that way um, so let's see what next um, The API needs to be designed so that, um, well, basically to make peer a little bit more the same, whether you want to do client server, because we want to do now this in both directions, uh, I guess is the next thing, right? Um, if, if I wanted to do that on the server side, how do I get access to call echo on the other end? We're not passing it in here. Um, and then another problem here is um, now that we have this client, um, 
actually it looks like we could just do pure uh, register and then we uh, our, call our own um, serve uh, childs Ch did I miss the name childs I think was the name thanks for following um, slowly getting up to that follower goal um, Yeah, but it looks like we're gonna have to wrap up here. Um, we're almost at time and I wanna do a recap. Um, so, let's talk about what next really quick. Um, API for more symmetrical use. Um, maybe try, uh, right. And so they maybe these change to something like in Go where you specify, you know, a supported transport. Um, uh, and then there's the reflection stuff, so that you can register objects. Uh, not functions, basically, um, and that they would actually get, you know, proper type stuff. Okay, let's try and do a quick little recap. Okay, so today there, there's a long introduction about using um, uh, kind of my history building RPC systems and touched a little bit on uh, why we're doing our own as opposed to using gRPC, uh, which is a, a totally fine uh, and good uh, RPC system. Uh, the one feature that it lacks well kind of the, the 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 breaking point is that it does not support um symmetrical uh usage so you can't you can't call uh methods on either side there's a very strict client server um differentiation even though it's underlying protocol http2 is a generic uh symmetrical multi multiplexing uh protocol um, and then we also talked about how I'm kind of pushing in the direction of Dbus, uh, which is a little bit more, less, basically has a, an object path is really the most significant thing. And then those object paths um, might be uh, ephemeral objects as opposed to a static uh, service or package with, you know, static, uh, you know, method handlers on them. Uh, and, and a couple of other things. So kind of pushing in, in the dbus direction, uh, but callbacks are incredibly uh, important. And one of the things about callbacks is that we don't have to, um, we don't really have to support streaming because we can model streaming with callbacks. Um, so we actually simplify a lot. And the other thing is, is that the RPC protocol is actually very simple. Um, on the wire, every uh, request and response is uh, two objects that are encoded in, in message pack. The first is some kind of header object that has metadata. In the case of the request, it's basically the destination or the path that this um, that you're trying to call. And then then there's another message pack object that represents the payload. It's always um, 
it can be any, it can actually be any value. It could be a string, it could be null, it could be an object, it could be an array. Um, but that's kind of what's intended to be passed uh, to that function when it's called. Um, and um, then the response is basically something that provides an object with, um, in this case, just an error, um, a nullable error. We didn't test that. Um, and then uh, whatever return value. Um, if you had multiple return values, that value could easily be uh, some kind of array. And that's it. So, But that assumes that um, it's basically making assumptions on what's on this wire. You're always going to, on one end, it's going to take two objects off, and then it's going to send two objects. In order to have multiple calls and kind of persistence in order to do RPC, you need to have a persistent connection. So. Traditionally, what I've done is TCP using some kind of multiplexing on top of TCP. Um, I've done this over SSH. That was an early, early iteration of duplex was over SSH um, because it has the multiplexing in there. And then a recent iteration basically put the multiplexing in the message. So you'd have channel IDs with every message that you send back and forth. And that's uh, kind of a messy way to go because there is a lot in terms of bookkeeping and handling all those channels. So. Um, this approach, we're basically leveraging an existing multiplex um, protocol, in this case, Quick, but we can generalize it to say we'll work easily on any multiplex protocol. It's a very simple RPC system, very expressive. And again, going more in the direction of DBus. Um, but what we did today, um, really quick. So after getting our Quick demo to work again, which is basically me playing with this Go library, um, which is both a client and a server. Uh, sorry, it is a it is a listener and a dialer, and both ends uh, both serve an echo method and call an echo method, um, and so we get something uh, like this. Go run demo. Um, so the client and the server are the dialer and, and listener, and it shows that they're both doing these things, running that method, and getting a response. So this was just a quick proof of concept to one, make sure that the library works um, and uh, lets us do those kind of bi-directional uh, sub-connections or channels. So then uh, we started on a transport. Basically, we've, and this is kind of an investment in the future. We did um, an interface for um, basically multiplexed, uh, um, a generic multiplex stream session, um, in which case it looks pretty much like a normal connection that you can close and get the address, but we can also open and accept uh, to get. Uh, and work with channels. Channels, which are more or less like connections, um, they're reader, writer, closers. Um, they also have an ID just for your own uh, bookkeeping. But these are basically streams within the stream. A multiplex connection, a tunneled connection, maybe. Um, so we ca came up with some interfaces that let us define uh, what the QRPC um, library is going to use as its transport. Um, and then we create an implementation that's specific to uh, Quick, which, since this is so similar to Quicks, so we're, we're mostly just wrapping it and making sure we return the same types. Um, and so now we have this transport, as well as this abstraction, where we could create other uh, implementations where we do this on top of HTTP2 or um, uh, or SSH, or over a custom uh, multiplexing protocol, which would be useful in cases like using WebSocket, because WebSocket is not a multiplex thing. So having a thin multiplex uh, wrapper would be great, um, which could be just HTTP2 over WebSocket. Um, so that now that we have this transport that we didn't even test, we just kind of assumed that this is going to work, because it's basically just wrapping it. Um, uh, we then started creating the QRPC stuff, which was 
um, defining some types. Basically, these are the header objects for the, re the request and the response. Um, these came later as ways to define uh, handlers and set up at, at certain paths. Um, we created an interface that is basically what we wrap our connections in. So it gives us a reference to the session, the underlying transport session, and then we can start registering um, handlers. It's interesting that this is an interface. Um, but we can register handlers that look like this. They're just functions that take interfaces. We're not doing any um, uh, reflection stuff yet. So we can get this working pretty quickly. And then we have call and we have close. So up here can both register functions to expose and then can also call them. Um, here's our peer, peer implementation, uh, which we ultimately created some kind of constructors to either dial or listen and serve. Um, we need to work on a way to improve uh, that to make it more uh, similar in both cases. Um, and all this is pretty simple. The interesting stuff is in call, which again is very simple. This is the RPC system. We open up a, a session. Um, we encode our, our metadata object, and then we encode the input arguments that we want to pass to the function. And then we just decode the response. We get a response header, um, tells us whether there was an error or not. And then we uh, decode the payload uh, of that response, and we return that. Um, this is really great because you can actually pass in a type, and it will decode into that type. So this is on the, on the calling client side, it's pretty good. But um, on the serve side, um, you know, this is pretty simple. We're actually just doing um, an accept, uh, and then we respond to the thing. We, we decode the request. Um, we look to see if we have that handler. If we don't, we return, we send a response with an error. Um, then we decode the payload, and then we call the handler with that payload. We reply, and if there's an error, we send the response with an error. Otherwise, we send a reply with no error. Um, that's pretty much it. So this is very simple, very bare bones. Um, and uh, all the interesting stuff kind of comes next. And so um, I'll be developing this more in future ep uh, episodes or streams. But I think the next thing I'm going to do on Thursday is probably um, create an abstraction. Well, we basically already have the abstraction for multiplex streams. Um, so I will probably just try and implement some other multiplexed um, sessions just to transports, um, just to see that this still works. Um, and if there's time, I'll, I'll do some other stuff on Thursday. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, you can uh, you can these events are scheduled ahead of time. Usually a week ahead of schedule. You can go and check the events on my Twitch page. If you're watching this on YouTube. Um, uh, I'd love it if you'd comment and, and let me know what you think about these. Hopefully I can take these uh, summaries at the end and um, edit them into something that's a little bit more uh, a high-level description over several streams. Um, so that's it. Uh, see everybody tomorrow.